Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It is a beautiful rainy winter day and I'm headed to the house to check on um, some exciting things that are happening. I believe Jay has started working on leveling the ceiling. Well, what a beautiful day. I tell you, this winter has been all over the place with like freezing cold and then warm and then raining and then a snowstorm and <sighs> that's just the way it is. But anyway, it is a Thursday night evening, 4.30 o'clock and I'm popping into the house. Um, today, my dad is doing some sawing. So I told him that I would stop in after work and help him tail lumber for a little bit. He's working on um, sawing the lumber that we need for the ceiling upstairs. So we're gonna have to be taking down the, wrap. they're not rafters, but where the ceiling is, like we're gonna have to, in order so that we can fit insulation and all that stuff, we're gonna have to bring it down some and then we can do strapping and do the sheet rock and all that fun stuff. But in order for us to do that, we need to have the lumber, et cetera, et cetera. So we're working on all of that fun stuff. Anyway, the big goings on here at the house lately has been figuring out how to level the ceiling and um, we're gonna do furring. I believe it's called furring. So it's small strips that are gonna go across the ceiling so that the sheetrock, when we put it on, it will be all level. Basically the way that the house is is very, very unlevel right now. So it's gonna have to, we're gonna have to put up little um, shimmy sort of things in order to make it level all the way across. Hope that makes sense. However, before that happens and all of the ceiling gets covered up from sheetrock and stuff like that, I wanted to show you a little something. So basically I was here with my dad and my brother recently and they're both loggers and so they know about logging stuff. And so they were looking at the the way that this house is built. So it's a post and beam construction. Um, if you've been following along with me, you know about this. So basically it's there's posts that are up around the outside of the house and then beams that sit on the posts. And then, oh, I'm so embarrassed. My nails aren't even done. Look at that. So anyway, the, the beams sit on the posts and um, then the floor joists like for the upstairs sit on the beams. Let me show you what I mean. Okay, it's a little dark up here, but you can see this is the beam going across and it's sitting on this post right here. This is the post, the beam sits on it, and this holds the whole house up, which is pretty amazing. But what is really cool about this, like these specific posts and beams, which I didn't know about until my dad told me, but they are hand hewn. So that means that they were basically, they were a tree once, and then they were cut with an ax, or whatever they used, an ax like thing, and they were cut into, to make them to be like a square, like a beam. So I'm trying to find good lighting to show this. It's really not the best. But you can see that there are little ax marks up and down these posts and these beams and that's how you can tell you know that they were done by hand versus cut with a sawmill you know so that's pretty incredible like so much work to do that from a tree it's insane but these beams that are across the whole house the length of the house my dad said that they're 24 foot and it's just one beam, one tree. It was a 24 foot tall tree that they made into this beam. Mind blowing that they did that by hand. And then on top of that, when you think about the fact that they somehow, how did they do that? They set that on top of the post. They didn't have heavy machinery. That's absolutely insane. And in this house, there are one, two, three, there's one here, and then four, one on that side. Four of these 24 foot hand hewn, hewn is a new word for me. So if you're not familiar with it, I wasn't familiar with it either. But anyway, 24, three, four 24 foot hand hewn 
um, beams. And I just think that that is really crazy. Like how amazing is it that people made this 150 years ago and with these huge, huge, huge beams, mind blowing. But obviously it was a good technique because it's still standing today. That being said, I can almost hear you asking me in the comments, um, why, since that is so cool, you know, why am I not leaving these exposed? And the answer to that is because I really can't, <laughs> because it is very crooked. In a way, I, would, I wouldn't mind leaving, like, I've seen it with, you know, the exposed floor joists or whatever, and that would be cool in a way because it would make the ceiling seem higher, like, it'll be sad to have to put sheetrock on, and then the ceiling will be slightly lower than it is. But honestly, it's not even an option, because the house, the ceiling is so unlevel, like, it's probably going to go down from one side of the room, this room here, from one side to the other, it's going to go down like three inches on the one side. So it's really like noticeably with your eyes, very clearly you can see that it is crooked. So basically what we're going to have to do is have, you can see he's already started some. So Jay has gone through with his fancy level and he is bringing down, you can see, that entire two by four is coming down. Like, I'm pretty sure he's already done this, so that's where the sheetrock is gonna go. And then he built this down to show where the sheetrock is gonna go. That just like shows how much, which is super unfortunate, you know, because that means that we're losing that ceiling height in here. Um, but that's how much it needs to go down in order to have a ceiling that is level, which is, fairly important because that's like what you're seeing. I think that's more important than the floor being level because when you're looking at eye level and you see the window, like even right now I can totally see that the ceiling is crooked even just over the window. So it's, you know, it has to be done. And so that is the main reason why we will be putting sheetrock over the whole ceiling. But the whole ceiling will be level and that will be amazing. So anyway, that is the excitement that is happening here at the house. I just wanted to show you before it was too late. Um, I wanted to show you those really cool features about the house and how houses were made. It's just mind boggling. The things that people did, they must have been way, way stronger than us. But anyway, now I'm going over to dad's house and we're going to do some sawing. Woo! -hoo! I can't even get over how slippery it is. And because it, it was like so hot and all of the ice melted and then and now it's just like I mean it's still icy it's like a slushy icy raining disaster zone but anyway I've gotten changed into my work clothes and I'm headed out to see I don't hear the sawmill hopefully dad's around here somewhere so funny fact um, we had to do, it was 20 2 by 6 by 14s and that's what we're going to need for the roof job. But um, Dad realized that he had like half of them, more than half of them, already done in the pile and he didn't even realize that. So we don't actually have as much work as we thought we did. But um, I am putting them directly onto the truck so we can bring them down to the house. So basically he said we only need to do one I'm going to put these ones that are already sawed on the truck with those and then we'll just basically saw the one log and then I will be able to bring them up to the house and we will have everything we need. Well, that's not what I wanted to happen. I don't know what kind of wood this is, but it's pretty heavy. Then again, it is a pretty big piece.
brilliant. Okay. So last activity for the night is to bring these beautiful pieces of lumber to the house. And I'm sure we will have the beautiful opportunity to get absolutely soaked while we're doing it. So I wanted to mention also about the wood that we're using um, for the ceiling upstairs back here. I asked dad because I'm like obviously I know that people usually use dry wood for this kind of stuff and I'm like obviously I don't want anything to be warped in my house and he said that first of all obviously we are doing this whole renovation at a snail's pace so <laughs> he said you're not going to be putting up sheetrock for months now anyway and by then it would be dry totally dry and it'd be fine but he said that half of the wood is already dry because it was sawed quite a while ago and it's already dry and he said the stuff that was sawed that we just sawed sawn that no it must be sawed it just sounds weird anyway the stuff that we just did he said that the tree itself was cut down quite a while ago so it wasn't super green to start with and um but he said that by the time we get to that point it'll be totally dry because it'll be sitting there you know screwed into the current rafters or whatever they're called ceiling ceiling things and it'll be screwed there so it'll have to stay straight because it's screwed in and then it'll be you know there for months before anything goes on top of it in the way of sheetrock so that's the low down there I should be backing in here. What am I doing? A lot of people have asked me in the comments, how far away from my parents' house is my house? And the answer to that is, um, I'm not sure. Not very far. Um, I think maybe a mile. Probably a, about a mile ish. So it's pretty close. Super handy. Especially because there's no bathroom here. So I go to their house a lot. Okay, I'm putting my hair completely under this hat. Try to preserve what I can. I've got these little lights to bring a little joy to the occasion. They don't bring that much light, but they're pretty. That's the thing with the solar lights. In my experience, they're not terribly bright. But they're so great because you don't have to do anything with them. And they just come on automatically. So these are going to be used, I think, fairly quickly. I don't know if Jay's going to continue working on the ceiling or if he's going to start doing this instead. It might also depend when people can help him. I'm not sure, I haven't talked to him yet, but I can't imagine doing this job by yourself. Oh. 
These are heavy. Um, okay, awesome. So, what's new with you guys? Today is, I think this video is coming out on Valentine's Day. So happy Valentine's Day. I hope that you all have a beautiful day. Also, just a quick reminder that my little Valentine's Day fundraiser for my sweet friends in Ethiopia, today is the last day. So if you want to donate, um, that'd be so cool. But check out the link below my video or to the side of my video if you're on a computer. I feel like I'm racing the night with this video and with this job. And it's also, since it's so rainy, it's like misty and foggy and just makes everything darker. But like I said in one of my recent videos, I totally can't complain because I am just thrilled Woo! of how light it is. It's like 5.30 now, I think. Oh, it might even be later than that. But you can still see. It's amazing. You know, I read somewhere. No, I didn't read it. I don't know why. Where I got that from. I heard somewhere from one of my friends. And I did not fact check this at all. But I heard somewhere that right here where we live, in the month of February, we are going to be gaining 70 minutes of light time. So February 28th is 70 minutes lighter than February 1st. How cool is that? Okay, it's getting pretty dark. I'm gonna close off this video before you can't see anything at all. I have a few more to do, but you're just gonna have to trust and believe that I did them after I signed off with this video. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. It may not be your typical home renovation video, but in my life, these are all of the little things that add up to my house actually getting completed someday, eventually. Can't wait to see it. Can't wait for you to see it. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Please consider subscribing if you haven't already and tap the bell so you'll be notified when new videos come out. So I hope you have a fantastic day. Happy Valentine's Day. I love you guys. I'm so glad that you have joined me in this exciting journey and I will see you guys next time on A Drill and a Dream.